So VBA is based upon object-oriented design. So the uh, with Excel, Word, PowerPoint, and the full Office 365 suite, they are based on object-oriented design principles. This means you can, so a range is an object, for example, a chart is an object, the uh, line on a chart is an object, Excel itself is an object, Word is an object, some text you type is an object, and so on, uh, throughout uh, all of the Office suite. This makes it easier for us to communicate between different parts of the software. And it's good to think of object-oriented design a bit like Russian dolls. So if Excel is the external outer, outer doll, when you go and uh, open that up and go dig a little bit deeper and go into the next level, it, it's likely to be the application and the level below that, the workbook and so on, all the way down until you get to a specific chart or specific range or any specific object in Excel itself. So if we use Excel as an example, we can see here on the outer level, we've got the Excel object. Then within that, the application, so the, the open application. And within that, the active workbook that we're uh, working in. Within that, the active sheet that we're all still also working on. And then the specific range and then what we actually want to do from that. So in this example, this would return the value of the range A2 on the active worksheet. Let's see how this looks. So how do we explore these objects, this Russian doll-like uh, interaction within VBA? And how do we get some data from VBA to manipulate it and transform it to actually produce something that we want? Let's look at an example here by using the immediate window. So if you go into the VBA window as previous lessons, make sure the immediate window is open. And then you want to type a question mark, which means to start a command prompt. So it's to say that we want to get the result of a, a value here. And what we want to try and do is to actually output this value here of football in cell A2 without interacting with the spreadsheet at all. So thinking of the Russian doll example, if we start with the, the outer doll, the outer object, it's Excel itself. So Excel dot, and then we're zooming into the, the choice of many possible dolls underneath here. But the next one we want, next level we want is application. So the Excel application that we're in dot. And then the next level that we're in here is active workbook. So we're currently got a workbook open. So we'll say, okay, we want the active workbook. And then another dot. So zooming in again with the Russian doll analogy to the next level, we want the active sheet. So now we're starting to really get granular with detail here. And then finally, we want to choose the specific range. And this was cell A2. And we also want to be able to output something here to text. So we want the value football that's in range A2. So the, per the parameter we want is dot value. So we've gone from the outer uh, level here, the largest doll, Excel, and zoomed in all the way down to range A2, and then chosen a parameter from this, which is dot value. And as you can see, I've pressed return here, and it's actually output the correct result. So if I'd made any sort of spelling mistake here or anything like that, it would come up with an error message. So you know that if you get a result from here, it's, uh, it's successfully found the value that you want. And I can see that I can change the range uh, value here to actually output anything that's in the spreadsheet. Now this is obviously quite a wordy way to output just a single value but there is a shortcut. So we're in the VBA environment now, and so we're actually in Excel, we're in the application, where we have the active workbook open, and we have the sheet that we want to manipulate open as well. So you can see we have it all open here. So Excel will, will actually just assume and derive that you are, have this context already that you are already in the correct location where you want the result from. So we don't actually need this, it's assumed. Uh, it's, it's 
completed in the background, but it's it's we can assume that Excel knows we're in this uh, intro to VBA work, uh, workbook that we're on this worksheet. So if we go for the range A2 value without any of the preamble, we'll still get the correct response, the correct result here. Uh, so you can do this and get many different results from, from here. So for example, you can get the color index of the background of the cell. So if we, if we actually give this a color and say, okay, let's see what the color index is. And the color index is a list of 56 colors that uh, uh, 56 primary colors that Excel has. And uh, each color has represents a number. So the color red is three. And then we can actually experiment and see what other colors we get from outputting this. And so the green background is 50 and so on. And you can get all sorts, you can play around with this with the Intelli IntelliSense pop-up that appears and uh, see all sorts of different uh, results that you can that you can get from, from this and uh, see if you can get uh, uh, different results and outputs. To summarize, we went into the Excel application. We drilled down to the application layer underneath. So we went from the large doll to zoomed into the doll at the next level underneath. Then we zoomed in within that to the worksheet and sorry, to the workbook, the active workbook. And then we zoomed in within that level to the active worksheet. Then we zoomed in within that level to the active range, to the, uh, to, to the range. And then we chose the range with an argument, which was range A2. And then we applied the parameter dot value or applied the uh, the request to return the, val the parameter in dot value, which returned the value football. So we zoomed in from the outer layer to the outer object of Excel to the inner object of the range and return the value. Now, everything you interact with in Excel, Word and PowerPoint is an object. So there is a way to access it within VBA. So in the next example, we're going to see how we can zoom into the detail of a chart. Next, we're going to manipulate a chart and change the colors of a chart without using the user interface and only using VBA. Let's first create the chart. So if we highlight a data set and then insert recommended chart, and I'm going to choose the clustered column chart here. And I only want the revenue, so I'm going to delete series one and series two. And then we're left with the revenue. So you can see that we've got the revenue in uh, gray lines here. We also want to change the chart name because when you create a chart, it gives you a default chart name. So you see we have chart 11 here and we actually, let's just call this revenue. So you can rename it next to the formula bar here. And that's all we want to do in the user interface. We want to make the rest of our changes in VBA. So in VBA, let's see how to access the gray, uh, the gray bars in the, in the column graph. So let's first do the full uh, Russian doll from the full outside to the inside of getting the, the uh, color of the bar. So we've got Excel as before, dot application, dot active workbook. So we're zooming in. If you imagine a magnifying glass zooming in here, it will, it will help or the, the Russian dolls just zooming in every time we go up to a next level. Dot active sheet, dot chart objects. And this is, well, which chart do we want? We can actually select the one we've just named revenue. So I'm gonna call this revenue. Uh, dot chart, because when you have the chart object, there's actually other settings you can do, and we want to manipulate the ch chart itself. Uh, and then dot series collection with the index of the series that we want. And we've only got one series in our chart, the gray, uh, the gray revenue bars. So it's gonna be series one. If there was three series, for example, we could choose one or two or three. Then dot format, and then dot fill, dot for, foreground color, dot RGB. And then we can finally choose a color. So we want to change the gray to red and there's a shortcut here to call it RGB red 
Um, you've got things like RGB blue, etc. here, but this is a, a pre-built uh, default red option we can choose. Now again, this is very wordy and uh, very lengthy. And as before, Excel assumes the environment that you're in. So let's see, it knows we're in Excel, it knows we're in the correct application, it knows we're on the active workbook, and it knows we're on the active sheet. So we shouldn't need any of this. I'm keeping it in for the next couple of examples just to uh, show you that this is always derived in the background. But this is the what we actually need. We know we're on this worksheet and this is the uh, this is the chart that we want. So let's run this code and see if it works. Okay, so it, there was no error there. So let's go back to the workbook and there we go. We can see that it's actually changed the revenue to uh, this red color. Instead of these pre-built RGBs, we can also use this RGB function here, which will give you a hint as to what you can put in. So you can enter the red, green, and blue here. So we'll see, uh, we'll see what this does. We'll give it some random results and see what color we get when we run it. And oh, we've got a slightly uh, lighter red there. So let's take down the, the red quite a bit and see what happens. And uh, we've actually gone back to gray with that one and then let's up the blue. And there, there we've kind of made it more of a purple color at the moment. So you we've manipulated the chart fully within VBA without touching any of the user interface. Uh, so what if we wanted to change, let's first change the chart back to a grayish color, which we've done there. And what if, so what if we want to change just a specific point on the chart, say 0.3, so we want to color in the teddy bear uh, to um, a different color. So we want to change that into red. So what we can actually do is change specific points. So if I add points here, and say 0.3 and let's see and let's use the RGB uh, well we'll use this uh, fully red and then nothing in red and then nothing in green and nothing in blue so it should be a bright red color and that seems to have worked so 0.3 there we go has highlighted to a different color so we're actually painting with VBA now which is very powerful as you can imagine because you can actually code in uh, so you could likely come up with some ideas here already. You could work on a branding system for, or some branding VBA for all of your work, for all of your charts and workbooks. So that extremely time consuming process of going through every single chart and changing and adjusting all the colors each time, you could actually brand your charts all at once with using VBA code such as this. So we've seen how to manipulate a range using VBA and we've seen how to manipulate a chart using VBA proving that you can manipulate any object within VBA within Excel from the VBA window